Hello everybody, so today I want to talk about the use of what's known as a fox and hound device for tracing um, uh, circuits. And I'm down here on my pier and um, what I want to do is I want to add a, another circuit um, further upstream though. And uh, it's going to be a 120 circuit and to balance things out I want to make sure that that new circuit I add further upstream on shore is going to be on a different leg of the 240 service uh, than this outlet down here just so that I can keep uh, things uh, balanced. I, I just don't want all my uh, 120 circuits hanging off the same leg. So what I've done is I've plugged in, uh, Klein Tools makes this uh, nice fox and hound device. I think this is a model 310 and I've plugged in the fox device uh, down here on the pier and um, I'll go back up uh, on, on shore and use the hound device to try and sniff out which leg of the uh, 240 service that uh, uh, this guy is on. Now one thing I want to mention before we do that, you know, another way to do this would be to pull apart my, my sub panel down here, pull apart the main panel up on land and identify wire colors and figure out which leg uh, inside the box where the bus bars are that each of these circuits attaches to. And, uh, you know, that that's not hard to do, but that'd be a real pain in the butt. I'd have to take everything apart. I'd have to probably pull some of the uh, breakers out there to see where things are clipped in. Um, if you were using standard breakers, all the same size, that's not too hard because the panels always alternate you different legs as you go down. Here I'm using a combination of skinny breakers, single pole, skinny breakers, double pole, uh, back on land, it's a standard width breaker double pole, and by the time you try and work all that out by looking at things and poking at things or um, even doing continuity tests, it, it just turns into a side sideshow and it's kind of a pain. So if you can use uh, one of these fox and hound devices to sniff it out, boy that saves a lot of hassle. So we've got our uh, fox plugged in down here. And I'm going to head back up on shore and we'll use the hound device up there and see if we can pick this up. Okay, so here we are uh, up on shore. And here's our main panel for the pier. Uh, you know, a lot of times when you're adding uh, uh, some branch circuits and, and other things, uh, there's all kinds of different ways to classify and do these. Uh, if you were going to add just a normal circuit, Inside your home, that'd be a pretty standard branch, and you really just need to run the wiring for that circuit by itself. When you start running to separate structures, though, uh, as we consider this pier to be, um, you really end up needing um, a, a panel that serves that structure by itself. Uh, this one's got uh, ground rods. There's one there. There's another one about six or seven feet away. And this kind of serves as the the main panel for this structure. Um, interestingly, you don't you do not bond neutral and ground here. That's still bonded in only one place at your main surface entrance back at the house. But in all other respects, uh, really this behaves like your your main panel for the the external structure. In this case, a pier. So if you look up under here, right now I've just got one um, breaker. It's a double pole. Uh, 240 breaker, 30 amp, it's it's GFI, and that feeds power uh, down to the pier. What I want to do is come in here and add another um, uh, breaker, another circuit, it'll be um, 120 volt, 15 amp, to run some landscape lighting. And just so that I balance things out, I want to make sure that when I add that new circuit up here, that it's on the opposite leg of the 240 service um, as, uh, as compared to the um, circuit and the outlet that's down on the pier. That'll just let me balance things out and uh, uh, even things up. And that's important. I mean, the really the main purpose for running power down to the pier is to uh, run a boat lift. That's uh, 240 um, and um, it doesn't take all of this 30 amp circuit, but it uses up a good chunk of it, especially when the motors start up. And so when you start uh, uh, attaching your, your 120 circuits for other things, um, the worst thing you could do is, is 
accidentally put those all on the same leg and really imbalance your, your main circuit for the main purpose of the boat lift. So uh, it, it, in this case, I want to make sure that the new circuit is on the opposite leg of what uh, we used for the, the um, circuit down on the pier for that outlet. So I've got my uh, hound device. In fact, let me get uh, positioned a little bit better here. And what I'm going to do is power that on. And we're going to take it, we're going to scan across here. You do a few passes to let the device kind of learn. And now when you run it back and forth, you're going to notice there's a heck of a lot more beeping right here than anywhere else. And that's telling us that the Fox device down on the pier uh, is plugged into that outlet that is pulling off of this leg of the 240 service okay so that's the one uh, that feeds into the 120 circuit down on the pier and so when I go to add my new circuit up here um, what I want to do is I make sure I install it on the opposite leg to this one not use that one that's already being used down in the pier for for 120 stuff and so I'll make sure you know when I when I snap that new breaker into one of these available slots um, that it really should be on the same bus bar as this top breaker right here in the dual pole setup not the same one as this bottom guy and by doing that uh, things will be balanced out and again you know you don't need the the fox and hound device to do this you could pull the covers off and inspect the wires and do the normal types of uh, you know troubleshooting tests to determine which is which um, but you know look how much quicker it was using doing it this way i mean aside from me talking and, and taking video you know this was you know 30 second to a, a one minute task and that includes me climbing up the stairs so this is a real great way to do things it's a great tool to have um the first time i ever used a foxhound device was when i had to replace some smoke detectors in our home and uh, they were wired into ac power i had no clue what circuit they were on and so I got uh, you know this device um, hooked it into uh, the wiring at one of the smoke detectors and then went down to the main panel sniffed out which breaker the smoke detectors were on and was able to shut that breaker off and um, safely replace the uh, uh, smoke detectors uh, without having to play games and you know switch off every single breaker or shut off the whole house so uh, these are real handy tools to have again this is a Klein tool uh, a 310 it comes with the hound device and then the fox device which is down um, on the pier plugged into the circuit uh, this also has uh, some accessories you can buy to let you plug your your fox device into a light bulb socket uh, it has some alligator clips you can use to connect it to raw wiring and um, it's just a real valuable uh, tool to have to identify um, uh, wiring in, in a, a normal uh, household uh, and external structure wiring system. Um, real simple the way it works, that, that Fox device is really just injecting a high frequency signal into the line and this Hound device is just going to try and sniff that out. So uh, these things are great. Um, if you have to do any work like this, I uh, highly recommend uh, uh, getting one of these. I guess that's it for today. Uh, I got to Head back down there and uh, start the rest of this project. Thanks for watching.